Hey everyone. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that um, not too long ago, I decided to dive right into IPv6. Now, I didn't have any particular reason that made me have to do that, other than I wanted to learn about it, because it's always been something that's there, but, you know, I never really had the need to touch it. Like, I've been a network engineer for years, but in daily work, um, most people use IPv4, and I haven't really come across it that much. So, for that reason, I've never had to use it, so I've never really known it. Anyway, I changed ISPs to one that supports um, IPv6, because my old one didn't, and um, I disabled IPv4 completely on my network. So everything had to have IPv6 if it wanted to work. Now, by doing that, I learned all about, you know, uh, Slack and setting up um, RADVD on the router, which was a Linux box. So I was using uh, Linux programs there. Um, getting my 48-bit um, prefix delegation from the ISP, and setting that out for my network. And everything was fine, and I thought, this is good. Because the main reason IPv6 obviously came to existence was for the addresses. There's zillions, okay? Everyone knows that. But the idea of that, really, like, why we want that is so we can have end-to-end -end comms. Like, originally with um, IPv4 even, back in the day, originally you'd have this host with this IP address, this host with this IP address. You'd have that as your source and destination. No funny business in the middle, like NAT and things. So with IPv6, we've got enough addresses to do that. But I wasn't actually doing that um, initially anyway, because I've got a, a, um, a rule on my firewall that says do masquerading, which is source netting, on my outbound interface. And I had that for IPv4, obviously, because it's using the RFC 1918 addresses of 102.168 Woptiwop. And that rule still applied when I got to IPv6. So <laughs> I was still netting in IPv6 in that manner um, anyway. But what I did was... I got my prefix allegation from the ISP, my um, slash 48, and I set up my own DHCP v6 server. And I put some reservations in there for my own network so I could have them easy to remember. And the reason I did that was because if I set them up to get there to auto config their addresses with Slack, that's when you get the funky long, hard to remember IP addresses. Now, with IPv6, I'm more inclined to use DNS, but I still wanted to be able to have it sort of usable um, just with IP addresses. So I set up the DHCP server and I used the uh, prefix delegation that was given to me. So when I set up a host on my LAN, it starts with the one that was given to me from the ISP and then whatever I set that host to be from, the, um, from my DHCP server. The problem came up, and this is where I really changed my mind about the whole thing, is when I changed my um, internet connection from DSL to fiber, Still in the same house, same ISP. They actually changed that prefix delegation on me. They gave me a new one. And that, that made me think that's a real problem because no longer could a, a, a host out there in, in the internet somewhere route to my network because I was using the prefix of my old one. Okay, so all my um, hosts on my LAN were set up with my DHCP server using the old prefix. Now, if that was using Slack and it was auto config, from the new prefix delegation given me from the ISP would have been fine, but that would have not enabled me to have simple um, IP addresses and it would have still changed. The prefix still changed. So initially when I changed that service with the ISP, I didn't actually notice that they changed the prefix delegation because I was using that NAT, as I said, going outbound. So I still had my old prefix one in the, um, on my host and I was NATting it to the outside world. So they only saw my new WAN address. But when the traffic comes back, um, you know, it um, translates it back to the original. The problem is, me running a server internally on IPv6, um, a host out there on the internet wouldn't have been able to route to it because I was using my old prefix delegation. And it made me think, in the old, IP, in the old IPv4, you'd set up your home network with something like 192.168 something something. Now those addresses aren't routable on the internet, that's just for you, and you'll be doing that on your um, router as it goes out of your WAN. The thing is, you can keep that same addressing scheme no matter what you do on the WAN. You can change ISPs, change, change well, that's what you do, change ISPs, change your uh, WAN IP address, and um, you're still doing natting. And if you've got a server with IPv4, you've still only got one IPv4 uh, public address, if you can even get a public address. Um, so that wouldn't really change. But with IPv6, I'd have to change my whole network. And it got me thinking, here, here's where the core of the problem is. It's not so much that IPv6 is difficult. It's not difficult. I hear people say that. I say, why haven't you played with IPv6? And 
some when they're honest they go oh it looks too hard it looks scary first of all it's not scary because um, the hex um, values in the address pretty much well they do map to the uh, the bits that it represents so thinking about subnetting is, it's simpler in my mind there's just a couple of things to learn about um, uh, the multicast ICMP that not multicast let me rephrase that the ICMP messages are used for it and a lot of multicast involved uh, but that's not really hard if you're a network guy um, it, it's not hard to pick up if you already know networking in my mind it's, it's kind of simpler than IPv4 so some people say it's too hard I don't think it is um, I think another reason is that a lot of um, they say well who else is doing it I can get by fine with IPv4 and I thought yeah you can but you still got to do all that natting but anyway when I changed um, the service my prefix delegation changed and what I thought was I can't comfortably set up my own network with all these zillions of addresses that it boasts of having if I have to change them every time I change an ISP or something and I thought well a way around that might be something like this if you get a, a domain address right something.com you own that you, you buy it from whoever and then you just set your DNS DNS service to say okay this is my domain it points to me now you can own that forever why can't I get myself my own slash 48 and then have that routed by the ISP so if there was a mechanism for me to easily get a slash 48 now the the guys who handle that the, the big internet what are they called They're for the different regions of the world the ones that actually allocate IP addresses they tend to want justification of why you want this many addresses why you want it what's what's your business and what's all that it seems too hard so it should be easy to get a slash 48 that I own and with that I should be able to get an ISP to say hey this is my slash 48 route it to me which means they'd have to advertise it to all their peers so so it actually works out there in the internet if those two things happened I think that would be a big step forward for IPv6 now what I've also heard because I've had this uh, debate over the last few days of, of where I'm going with this and a lot of people say well you're a home user and it's okay for most home users but people like you who want to do network stuff um, you're asking a bit much for a home service my response to that is if they want IPv6 to be everywhere home is part of everywhere and people who use it at business those same in a business those same people still come home at the end of the day and they're going to use the internet at home as well there's, there's more home users than business users there has to be so the uh, home user can still use it like I said with with an automatic slack address uh, from their router but I don't think it's going to take off completely if we get if we don't get past that and have some mechanism of owning an IP address if there's enough for everyone how can I get mine I can't at the moment I've just got to borrow one from the ISP and they can change it at a whim so so that I think is a big problem in um, in keeping it so what I can do because I've been discussing this with um, with someone who knows IPv6 pretty well because I did a video a while back when I said I'm going into IPv6 and someone got in touch with me he said mate that's great I've been trying to push this thing for 20 years um, I can help you out so for technical resources I've got some experts on, you know, on hand who I can call if I um, need some explaining and he, and he has done as well but here's the thing he's got frust this other guy he's got frustration because he's been trying to push this for 20 years and it's still like a, <laughs> same as it was 20 years ago everyone's using IPv4 and that so I don't want to spend 20 years chasing something that's not going to happen you don't chase things that, that don't give you what you want stick with what what works so now I'm going back to IPv4 at home because I'll still have IPv6 because you know I want to play with it there and and because uh, I've you know dip my toes into it but IPv4 does work at home from a client's perspective because the servers out there that are access that you're accessing work just as well with IPv4 as they do with IPv6 so there's no need for that and yes there is NAT involved now for IPv6 um, want to get away from NAT you want to do end-to-end -end communications but for me to have a stable network at home where I don't have to change my addressing scheme I can I can set a private um, network address range because IPv6 has private ranges as well and then what I have to do is NAT66 so on my router I'd have to say whatever prefix delegation the slash 48 the ISP gives me I'll just map that to my slash 48 internally so it's a direct one it's not port translating or anything like that it's just direct address translation but it's still NAT um, and at the moment like when I had um, IPv6 only at home using the ISP's provided one 
I had to set up uh, Tager, which is NAT64, because half the internet's only IPv4. So to get to those websites, I had to translate my IPv6 traffic to IPv4. So it's NAT, and it's funky NAT too, going from um, version 4 to version 6. So th these are the problems. I don't think it's so much that it's too hard. It's really, it really isn't. But I do think there's lack of support from the even the vendors out there. Like there's some equipment that, you know, they say they support it, but when you get down to it, you can tell that they fundamentally based it on IPv4. Just, you can just sort of get that feel for it. Um, so that's, the vendors are going to have to do it. Then it becomes a case of, it's chicken and the egg, you know. Do they, vendors say, well, is anyone using IPv6? And the IPv6 people say, well, have we got support from, from you know, companies out there? So there's that aspect. But I think, <laughs> I, as I said, I don't know if, Everyone wants to do it to the degree that I want to do, which means knowing how it works and everything. But if you can own an IPv6 um, subnet yourself and get your provider to to route it for you out in the internet, then I think that'll go a long way because then it can have absolute end-to-end -end comms, you know, from for IPv6. So I'm going back to IPv4 for my main um, systems because I don't want to have to use NAT46 or NAT64 you know the one where I go from my IPv6 network to IPv4 at my router so I can get to an IPv4 address I'll just use IPv4 and um, maybe use IPv6 in a dual stack but it's that's another thing why do I want to run two stacks I mean I can do it but but why have two it's like which one are we doing here so I think when I read about the reasons why IPv6 hasn't taken off I don't think they've addressed addressed the fact that you can't yourself own an IP address or a, a range, a subnet there. If they do that, if there's a me mechanism to get your own prefix and get your service provider to route it for you as a standard thing, like DNS is, where you can get your own domain and get a, um, a DNS server to advertise it for you. If there was that mechanism for IPv6, I think that would go a long way because then you could be confident that you own that address space and your provider will route it for you. So that's where where the, the ISPs have to come in. Now, I had, a, I had an issue, as I said, when I changed um, service with my ISP, they changed that prefix delegation on me, and I didn't initially notice because I was doing that masquerading on the WAN. But when I noticed, I said, oh, hang on, this has changed. I want my old one back. And uh, I got the runaround with the help desk, and when they changed something, they said, yeah, we've changed it, and it didn't. I was, I was missing IPv6 for 10 hours. It was basically a write-off of a day. And just the usual back and forth of, did you turn it off and on again? This dumb shit. So they, the ISP weren't really ready to handle IPv6, um, uh, you know, queries. So having an IPv6 only network, when IPv6 died at the ISP because of something they did, that, that caused an outage. So it wasn't until I got someone else who someone knew and somehow got in touch with me who, who you know, knew what was wrong. So someone higher up knew what was wrong, but that didn't help me. And... Then it comes to the question of, well, if you had a business account, then you'd have got better service. And it's like, well, that doesn't help if you're a home user and the IPv6 crowd want everyone to use it. As I said, there's a lot of home users out there. So I don't think it's ready. And I think um, telling people that we should get into IPv6 um, to push it is not going to work when the ISPs themselves aren't, aren't enabling it. So until I can get an IPv6 um, subnet that I own, we won't be able to have, I won't be able to confidently set up one-to-one -one routing without any sort of NAT in the middle, like even NAT66 or NAT46 from IPv4 or some other funky thing. But it would be nice, so um, I'm not obviously adverse to try IP, IPv6 again, because, um, you know, I've just learned it, it wasn't, as like I said, it wasn't that hard, um, and it makes sense to use, but they're the things I'd like to see change so that so they can happen now i'm not in a position to change them hopefully someone watching this is um if you see my point uh, let me know if you've got some arguments let me know as well i love a good argument um but i'll leave that there and i'm heading back to ipv4 just to keep it simpler so i don't have to run tager i don't have to um i just don't have to worry so i might have some ipv6 servers only um, but that'll be the only reason i really need it so that'll do for now that's my little rant for today so until next time take it easy